Hey everyone, today we're going to take an in-depth look at the Python math module. Um, I've only ever used the math module a handful of times just to use the square root function or the log function, um, but it wasn't until recently that I discovered that there's so much more to the math module than I, I thought. So that's what I'm going to do today in this video is just kind of go through and, and take a look at all of these functionalities and hopefully we'll both come out of this learning something new. So let's just jump right into it. So first I'm gonna talk about the seal function or sealing. Um, basically it just takes an input and it returns the smallest integer that's greater than or equal to the input. So here we have 4.333. The smallest integer that is greater than that number is gonna be five, so we'll expect five there. And alternatively we have the floor function, which is just the opposite. It takes the input and it returns the largest integer that is less than or equal to the input. So we have 3.652 here and we should expect three as our output. So let's run this and yep, we get five and three for our outputs. Also, it's worth mentioning if you were to input a whole number in either integer or floating point format, it will just give you the number that you inputted in integer format because it does satisfy that or equals to condition. So next we'll talk about the comb method. The comb method takes in two input variables, n and k, and it just gives you the total number of unordered combinations to choose k amount of items from n items. So here in this example, we have number of people, which is gonna be 10, that's gonna be our n, and then we have number of seats, which is six, that's gonna be our k. So we need to figure out how many combinations of six people to sit in our six seats of the 10 people that we have. So we can simply just do comb, a number of people and number of seats and we can run this and we have 210 different combinations so we also have the perm method which is just like the comb method except this is with order so we have the same scenario of 10 people and six seats and so each way that we order those people in the seats will count as a combination so we should have a lot more combinations here and as you see we have way more combinations Next, let's talk about copy sign. Copy sign takes in two input variables and it gives you a float of the magnitude of X, but with the sign of Y. So one way this might be useful is say you're doing some kind of game development and you have your character that's going at speed 10 and it's moved a distance of a negative three. Well, negative three, that's a direction of negative. So if we wanted to get the velocity of your character, we could just take the speed and take that negative direction and apply that to our speed to get our velocity. So we can just do copy sign with our inputs as speed and distance moved and we can print the velocity here and we get negative 10 velocity. Next is the fabs function. It just returns the absolute value of your input. Um, there's nothing too special about this one just because Python already has a built-in function called abs for this, so there, there's really no reason that you would ever use this. But for the sake of inclusion, I did decide to include this into the video. Now we have the factorial function. Uh, simply put, it just takes the input and gives you the factorial of that input. So here we have factorial of five, it's just one times two times three times four times five. And we'll print that and we get 120. And now we have the fmod function, and the fmod function takes in two input variables, x and y, and it returns the modulus as a float. Um, a modulus, if you don't know what a modulus is, it's just the remainder. If you were to uh, divide x by y, it's the remainder of that. So here in this example, 100 divided by 9, 9 goes into 100 11 times with a remainder of 1. So the fmod function here, we should expect a 1 and there we have it we have one in floating point format and again python already has an operation for modulus you can just do 100 percent sine 9 and that will also give you the same answer but in uh, integer format so what's the difference well i don't want to go in a rabbit hole on this video but essentially fmod is better if you're using really large or really small floating point numbers and if you're dealing with just regular integers just use the python percent modulus operator so next we have the frexp function. It takes one input and it returns the matissa as a float and the exponent as an integer of your input. So I had to look this one up. I, I wasn't sure what a matissa was, um, but in scientific notation, we use the matissa times uh, base 10 to our exponent. And the same logic applies here, except we're doing base two instead of base 10. So it gives us our matissa here in floating point and our exponent as an integer. 
So we'll put in 16 for our input and let's see, we get a 0.5 for our Matissa and a five for our exponent. And just to reverse the calculations, we can take our Matissa and multiply that by two to the power of our exponent and we should get 16. And there we go, we get 16 in floating point format. And instead of just doing what I did there, uh, the math module has a built-in LDEXP, which is just a reverse of FREXP where you input your Matissa and your exponent. So our Matissa here will be X of zero, which is 0 0.5, and our exponent will be X of one, which is five, and we should get 16, and there we have it, 16. Okay, so now we have the Fsum method, and it takes an iterable as its input, and it returns an accurate floating point sum of the values in the iterable. So here we have a list of uh, 0.2s, there's 10 of them, and we're gonna sum them together. So Python already has a sum method, but you'll see in this example that it actually has some rounding errors as compared to the fsum method. So as we see here, we get a 1.999 for just using the sum method. And this was something that I wasn't aware of until I did the research into this video. Uh, if, if you're interested of why this is, I recommend going and reading up on it. It's quite interesting. Um, but I think from now on, I'm just going to use the fsum method for all of my summations. Next we have the GCD function, uh, greatest common divisor, and it takes in two input variables and it gives you the largest number that can divide into both of your inputs. So we can print our answer here and we get six. So new in Python 3.9, I only have 3.8 so I can't demonstrate, but you can now have multiple inputs in your GCD function. They've also added a LCM function which is just returns your least common multiple and as you see here, we have least common multiple of two, three, four, and six, and that should give you 12. So now we're gonna look at the isClose method, and the isClose method takes in two variables, A and B, and it returns true if they're close to each other and returns false if otherwise. And the closeness of these two inputs is determined by relative tolerance and absolute tolerance. Um, we'll talk about relative tolerance here. This is an optional parameter. Um, by default, it is one e to the negative nine. So it basically acts as a percentage of the larger value, either a or b, and the smaller value must lie between the subtraction of the percentage of the larger value from the larger value and the larger value itself. So essentially in this first example, we have three and four. So four is our largest value. Our relative tolerance is 0.5. So our smallest value, three, must lie between a range of 50% of four, which is two, all the way up to four. And three happens to be right in the middle, so we should get true here. And a similar concept applies down here. So we have relative tolerance is 20%, so 80% of four, which is 3.2. That's our lower bound, and three will not be in this range, so we should expect faults here. So we can run this, and we have true and false in our outputs, just as we were expecting. So our other optional input variable is absolute total. And basically this just gets subtracted from our larger input and our smaller input must be between the bounds of that subtraction value and our larger value to be considered close. So again, we have our inputs of three and four here and we have our absolute tolerance of two. So our largest value is four. So our smallest value three must be between two and four in this example. So we should expect true here. And down here we have our absolute tolerance set to 0.5. So three must lie between 3.5 and four, which is false. So we should expect false for this answer. And we run this and yep, we get true and false. So next we have three functions here. Uh, first we have is inf and it returns true if x is equal to infinity and false otherwise. And the math module has a built-in variable called inf, which just stands for infinity. So we have num is equal to inf. And then so if we call is inf here, we should get true. And next is the is nan function it returns true if x is a nan, which stands for not a number and false otherwise. Again, the math module has a variable for a nan, which is just nan, so we have num is equal to nan, so we should expect true here. And we have is finite, which just returns true if the input is neither infinity or nan. And we just have nine here, so we should expect again true. So let's run this and we get three trues here. Next we have the i square root function and essentially it just takes the square root of your input and it rounds it down to the nearest integer. So here the square root of eight is two point something and so we should expect two here and then the square root of nine is just gonna be three. So we can run this and we get two and three. So this one's pretty interesting. We have the mod f function and basically returns the fractional part and the integer part of x. And we have 8.22 here so we're gonna have our 
fractional part and our integer part here as a tuple. And also both of these will carry the sign of the input. So if we have a negative 8.22, both our fractional and integer part will be negative. So next we have our prod function, which stands for product, and we input an iterable and an optional variable start, uh, where its default value is one. And so basically we just calculate the product of all the elements in the iterable. So here for the first example, we have uh, an iterable of 10, two, and five. So the prod of that is just gonna be 100. And so down here, we actually have our start value set to two. So it's gonna be two times 10 times two times five. So that should give us 200. So let's run this and we get 100 and 200. Okay, so that will conclude this video. So far I've only covered the number theoretic and representation functions. That's all I was able to cover. But in the future, I will make a video to cover the rest of the math module, um, including all of these you know, angular functions, hyperbolic functions, special functions, etc. cetera. Um, but if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like. And if you learned something, please share what you learned in the comments. Also, please consider subscribing if you want more of my content. And thanks for watching.